um, look at some of Kirby's numbers, um, the, the types of picks he's getting are, are different in, in style. It really just seems like he's, he's able to do just about everything. How much of those instincts are, are just natural uh, versus what, what is coached for him? I think Shay and I have completely coached it all into him. No, <laughs> no, yeah, he's got he's got unbelievable ball skills and he's got unbelievable ball production. I mean, you see it from the first, you know, you see it from the first time you work with him. Um, I think Dan, you know, when they drafted him, he was a raw talent, but the vision was exactly what he has become, and he still can be so much better. But his his ability to track the ball and the natural angles he takes to the ball and and the ability to go high point it and finish it, it's special. It's, it's a special skill. So, I mean, obviously anybody that can take the ball away in this league, I mean, that, that helps a lot because obviously it has a direct correlation to who wins football games. There's the joke always that <coughs> DBs are receivers that couldn't catch. Um, it is clearly not true with him. I don't know if I've seen a better safety, with right. better hands on a safety. So what, is, what work does he put in to that as a former receiver? You, so yeah, I was going to say that he he was a former receiver, obviously at uh, at Illinois, but um you know deep ball drills and you know he's he's a classic DB that loves to play catch, so um you know it's like I said it's it, that stuff comes easy to him. The thing that I think he's really improved on this year is his open field tackling. Just in the game, you know you had two or you had two or three balls that popped, and uh, last year. He, he wasn't as consistent in those space eraser tackle situations, and I think he's worked really hard on that this year as far as tracking the near hip, cutting the ball carrier in half, and chesting guys up in space. And that, that's, that's what I think he's done an awesome job with as well as tracking the ball and getting the takeaways. What's the benefit of, of having two guys like Brian and Kirby who almost seem like they're interchangeable, and, and just what does that allow you to do on the back end of, the, of your defense? Well, I think it allows AG to be really creative. And I, and I think one of the best things AG does is most coordinators attack scheme with scheme. And AG attacks scheme with personnel. And I, and I think that that's, he, from where I've been and what I've been around and haven't sat in that chair, um, I think that that's why we're get, having the success that we are on defense. I think he does an unbelievable job with that. It's just not, hey, I like this coverage. Well, yeah, you might like that coverage or you might like that front, but can our guys, can our players execute that? And how are we putting our players uh, in position to make plays? And he's always thinking that way, and and it's pretty cool. So when you get back to Kirby and you get back to BB, both of them have ability to blitz. Both of them have ability in the deep part of the field. Uh, obviously, BB has an unbelievable ability to play man coverage against slot receivers. Kirby can play man coverage against tight ends. So there's a lot of things that you can do with those guys. And I think as, this, as the year started, we were probably more 80-20 with as far as Kirby in the deep part of the field and BB um, down into the box and doing some of the man coverage stuff. As the season's gone on, we're probably getting closer to that 60-40. Brandon Joseph ended up playing a big role in that last game. What, where does he continue to grow and uh, show you guys that he can handle those moments we call upon? Yeah, I, I give B. Joe a ton of credit, and, and I say that because we've kind of forced the chemistry uh, in the first half of the year with, with um, Kirby and uh, BB just because they missed so much time in the offseason. And for us to keep taking steps as a secondary, those guys obviously have to have that chemistry together. So B. Joe went into that game with very limited reps. He went into the Seattle game with very limited reps. And um, we, we've beaten two, obviously, playoff caliber teams with B. Joe in there for a significant part of the time. And the standard's been the standard. He's gone in and done a really nice job. So um, proud of him. Pr proud of how he can sit in the back and absorb reps without actually physically getting them. Obviously, obviously you want Branch to come up and hit. Um, how do you – what was the teaching point after the helmet helmet? Yeah, I think that's hard. You know what I mean? But, you know, the, 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 easy, the easy answer is, hey, lower your target. But when you're running full speed and other guys running full speed and all of a sudden his weight drops and the angle changes, that's, that's hard because you don't want to tell guys all of a sudden, hey, now go through, the, go through their knees. So we're trying to lower their target into the sternum. But just, it's a bang-bang play. It's hard. I don't think he had malicious intent at all. What happened, happened. But that's how we coach it. Is there any more to that, Jim? I know Jim said that too, lowering his target. But, I mean, he has 
lowered his eyes, lowered his head on two with the, the Arizona collision as well, where he hurt himself. I mean, is there more to, to his tackling form that he needs no, to adjust? I think it was. I, th I think he's a very aggressive player. I think we are a very aggressive defense. Um, I think that he plays exactly how we want our guys to play. Uh, I, I, I believe he was forgiven for the Arizona thing. I don't know about that. You'd have to ask him. But I think both those were situations where the receiver was tracking the ball and at the last second at full speed, you know, the, the target changed, which where his target was sternum. And then when the, when the ball carrier or the receivers drops, that sternum now becomes higher up in the head or neck area. So I, I think that that's part of the game. Um, you know, there were probably four or five hits very similar to it uh, just this past weekend. I, I do think the defensive players have done a great job over the past few years taking those kind of hits out of the game. So I, I don't think anybody's going in there trying to go helmet to helmet because everybody understands the consequences of it. Hey, who's going to be the first? Who's going to be the first corner to get a pick? And how much have those guys been, <laughs> been talking about that and on each other about it? Well, th those guys are doing a great job playing tight coverage. So uh, you know they're forcing they're forcing some balls to get overthrown them and the and the uh, front seven. But I I, I I would be shocked if they're not talking about that and if there's a little side wager on what's going on for push-ups or something like that. <laughs> You, uh, you mentioned the safety rotation's gotten more 60-40 than 80-20, but I'm just curious, was that Branch's blitz that, that Kirby was backfilling there at that time? We, we have made a conscious effort, AG especially, to uh, make sure both of those guys have blitzes in the game plan. And I think that um, for an offense, that creates problems because both those guys are down in the box and you could probably see them running high in some of our shell and uh, too high man-to-man -man coverage stuff. So now you don't know... If Kirby's down in the box, is he running high? Is he blitzing? Is he playing man coverage on a tight end? And same thing with, with BB. So, again, I think that that's AG knowing how offenses are going to perceive what we're doing defensively and just changing the look on them. All good. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good afternoon, guys. Girls. Good to see you guys. Uh, you know, just really, really impressed with the team. Uh, Offensively, defensively, I know it's special teams, but offensively, you know, probably the thing I'm most, uh, you know, proud of is the way that our our receivers and, and passing game went out and executed in the game. A lot of people talk about a lot of different things, but, you know, the preciseness of our pass game with, with JG and huge shout out to our wideouts when we told them to be on the fifth time their outside foot hits, that's where they were, snapping it up in some of that weather, catching the ball, like, you know, some of the things St. Brown uh, did was, was easy to see, but the details in our passing game, um, it, it did show up in our run action game with our wide outs and, and, and our tight ends and Sam getting in there making a huge play for us. Uh, but just, you know, collectively it was a big time win for us, no doubt. A lot of people, you know, probably said we, you know, we couldn't do this, couldn't do that weather. But like, like coach said, this team is, is really built for, you know, any situation. We got, we got weapons. Uh, we got a great guy that can lead us, uh, at the quarterback position. And we're, we're looking forward to the challenges that come a lot different this week. Uh, you know, the challenge is probably this week for us more than anything is speed, uh, speed at the defensive end position, speed at the linebacker position. Great, great, you know, guys out covering uh, at the corner position led by Stingley. So uh, another challenge this week. It seems like every week in the National Football League, the games get bigger. Seems like there's more running around the NFL period this year. Um, I don't know if you're able to, you know, see the, the forest through the trees, but do you think that's a, a reaction maybe to some of these defenses really trying to take away the big play with, with some of the deeper zone looks? It's just opening up the opportunity for, for offenses to run in this league? Yeah, I think you, you have trends uh, definitely year to year, even season to season. You know, we're in it's kind of we just finished up our second quarter, which we're really happy about where we are in our second quarter. But just like our quality control is happening, their quality control is happening. You start to see more runs. You are seeing runs. We've seen that from the beginning of the year, really, as, as I've looked around the league. Some guys have done some productive things in the run game. So there will be some adjustments come after four games, after eight games, uh, as the season kind of moves into the second half of the season. There will be some adjustments. But we are seeing some, you know, we're seeing some new coverages. We're seeing some guys mix some things, some coverages, teams that haven't done them so so uh, the run game has benefited from seeing some two high shells, from seeing some quarters, and then also seeing some late rotation single high. So it has, it, I, I've definitely seen that. Coach, 
Uh, you know, you, you, you like it, there's no doubt. If we can keep one extra guy out of the box, uh, I probably would say there are opportunities to, for the passing game as well since of my background. I like to see it, you know, I like to see us, you know, come together, all of it, pass, run, all of it. But there are some opportunities because it is zone. We are getting some zone looks. We just got to be able to find those zone looks and, and put them in situations where we can predict uh, the probability of them being in those zone looks. So that's what we work on every week. And uh, But we do like the fact that we're getting some six-man boxes and not always these, you know, 99 looks where it's, you know, you're getting seven, seven man boxes and you're getting, you know, situations to where receivers are having to come down into the box, creating another man in the box, which is now taking up a lane or vision lane, not necessarily a gap, but a vision lane for the backs, which makes it difficult. It makes them stutter their feet a little bit more. The more we can keep it, you know, kind of, you know, just a little bit wider out there and, and hitting high safeties or stand on corners. Now the vision lanes become a lot cleaner and, and clearer for our guys. I don't have very much to do with it. You know, really, it's the way they've been raised. You know, sometimes you get around people, we just, you know, Brad. And, and, you know, they, they just done a really, really good job of bringing the right people in, understanding that we're, we're going to put super talented people in the same room. We got other rooms like that with super talents in the same room. And, yes, both of them can definitely be lead backs. They are both uh, definitely both lead backs. Uh, and then it's the relationship that you help them build with each other to make them understand that, you know, hey, we can all eat, right? And it can be plenty, and we can do it for a long time. And at the position, you know, what we're doing is also creating not only longevity for the season, but also longevity for their career. Uh, and I think that's important. I think that both of those guys understand the importance of being able to do this for a long time, not only providing for their family, but the opportunity to be in a championship situation and win. Uh, that doesn't come very often. So when you start talking about how do you get them to place the ego aside, the first thing that you do, if you want to be a good teammate, you eliminate ego, right? Uh, I talked to the team a couple of weeks ago about eliminating certain things if you want to be great at something. But when you have a, a common goal and you have a chance to win, uh, one of the things you have to do is you have to be at your best at all times. And one of the ways we're able to keep them at their best is to split some of the things that they do. Your guy, but Saquon Barkley's backward hurdle. There's no way you missed it. Amazing, amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Um, yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like that. I, it almost looked like it could have been AI or something else. Uh, I, but I know that it wasn't. I've always loved Saquon. I've you know watched him. You know his all season workouts are crazy. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the weight that he can he can move. But it didn't surprise me that he can jump what 60, 70 inches straight up in the air, keep his balance, turn around. Uh, amazing play, uh, amazing play. I'm glad that he had that happen for him. Uh, that definitely would have been hard for me not to turn into a fan on the sideline if I saw it. Yeah, great play. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.